Behind the cake. First thing we're going to talk about, an unnamed Disney exec has come out with some crazy quotes that we must discuss. We are going to discuss, and then we're going to predict who said them as well. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Everyone says it's the movie's stupid, which is an easy thing for people to say. More appealing movies are a great way to jump the political issues, but more and more our audience, or the segment of the audience that has been politicized, equate the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue. They won't say they find female empowerment distasteful in the Marvels or Star Wars, the latest trilogy starring Daisy Ridley, but they will say that they don't like these movies because they're bad. So make better movies because becomes code for make movies that conform to regressive gender stereotypes or put men front and center in the narrative. Basically, you don't believe that our movies are bad. You believe that we are doing something different in uh, female empowerment in our movies. And that's what you really hate. But you don't want to say if you that. don't like. Yeah, if you don't like what we're doing, you're an historophobe. Yes. Of yep. some sort of, of some sort. This is the same school of thought that superhero fatigue comes from. It's the same school of thought that led us to not having a T'Challa. It's the same school of thought that has Thor being a galactic babysitter brain rot. Oh, yes. It's, it, it's, it's really stupid because even the most wokeified woke chasers on the internet, and you all know who they are, right? Even they sometimes not a lot because it's easier just to say woke but sometimes they will go in depth with what it is that they don't like about the movie what was stupid there is a million things that you can criticize disney on before you get to the social messaging stuff let's say that the particular way that disney is going about pushing their social message which is more so of my thinking as opposed to what the message actually is altogether. How I would respond to that is it is more successful, and it's already been proven, right, by you currently and by regimes past, it is more successful to put female characters in the same traditional archetypes that already existed before you started allowing women to be in the movies at all. So if the Steve McQueen archetype or James Dean in, in A Rebel Without a Cause or James Bond, any of those archetypes already exist, right? They have long film portfolios on characters that have been played in that exact same structure. So why all of a sudden when we turn our focus to elevating female characters is the conventional wisdom not give those female characters the same archetypes? Make them struggle, make them relatable, make them triumph, cheer them. End of movie. Why is it so much harder for you to do that for James Bond than you would for Juliana? You know why? Because your method of delivery fucking sucks. Art and, 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 and content creation is not a breeding ground for politics. You know why? Because if I am a politician... And I want you to get to my political thought. The first thing I'm going to do is challenge you. I'm going to challenge your way of thinking. I'm going to challenge your perspective. I'm going to challenge your way of thought. No one goes to movies to have that happen. No one goes and buys $12 to have a dissertation brought to them in movie form. In the form of what was supposed to be lighthearted children's content the greatest intersection between activist and, and creator happens when they don't even know that they're being preached to. When your perspective or your thought process is being laid out in front of an audience and they don't even realize that it's political. Well, these goofs don't realize that the 30 years of Star Wars that preceded them was already political. The fucks that are arguing about Star Wars being too political or too female driven sat up there and watched the first three episodes of Star Wars with Leia being an absolute badass and being a cornerstone in the franchise and then all of a sudden it's like oh no you can't have women no 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 no, no. that's not it we had Carrie Fisher we had Angelina Jolie we had Demi Moore we had Lucy Lawless 
we had strong female archetypes. Just all of a sudden, post 2010s, every female archetype had to get to their peak super fast without any type of hardship. And then not only that, you put the extra stink on it of making every male in their orbit idiots. That is what people don't like. Not the natural reorganization of standard gender roles in our society. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Like, actually, who gives a shit? Stepford Wives was made how many fucking years ago when all the wives took the fuck over the town? Talk about reorganizing gender roles, and nobody was calling that movie woke because that word still belonged to black people. You know, what I find interesting is that there is a movie coming out that'll put all of this to shame, right? Uh, John Wick, the series is over, and yet the ballerina is coming out, right? And so I think we have enough trust in the people who are making the John Wick movies that they're going to give us a good story, right? And they're not going to heavily politicize it. They're not going to uh, make the other characters around her idiots, right? And it's going to do very well. How many female characters were in uh, the Continental? You had a Richie's few. girl. You had the sister from the dojo shop. Mm -hmm. You had the cop, right? The one who, you know, was in that house that Richie and them blew up. You had a, a few. You had quite a few, right? You had mm -hmm. at least three or four out of like a seven or eight person cast. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like any of those characters, those female characters, were put to the side, presented in a, a hyper misogynistic way where their bodies overexposed, where they made to be the sidekick or the dummy, did they not lead enough? In one time, did you hear any of those women go on some feminist diatribe about how men shouldn't lead or anything like that, or how girl power is the best, or how, you know, whatever? vaginas rule whatever the hell they're trying to put into the dialogue of these movies to make it super clear super clear that they love women did you hear any of that in continental no and i'll give you the one caveat is that the cop was having uh an affair with the the other cop that was the, that was the worst thing yeah and she was Which, still a badass it seems like she was still it, she wasn't just the other woman she was the one running the plays like yeah Hey, 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 give me what I want for I come up and blow up your shit. You know, I don't give a damn about your old, 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 old silly ninny wife. I ain't care. I don't care nothing about her. Hurry up and give yeah. me what I need. Yep. Right? It's like it is not impossible to make these these characters, whether it be male or female, popular and make them go. It's just that Disney is not doing it well. Period. People come to comic book content for comic book characters. People come to cartoons for cartoons. They don't come there for a feminist diatribe. There are arenas for that that are specifically set up for that to challenge schools of thought. I just don't happen to be happen to think that media is one of them. And if you do happen to have a cultural or a social impact, is because you did so successfully through your delivery, not because of your message. Let's pick and choose. Let's pick and choose. Who do you think said this? Hmm. Disney exec doesn't say anything about former. I guess that's that's where my mind will go. There's a couple of former execs, but I don't know. I don't know. This is either Kevin Feige or Bob Iger. You think it's Feige? They're the two who are in charge of the direction of not just Disney's content, but the flagship of Disney, which is Marvel Studios. If they're the two that are driving the narrative as it currently stands, they've gotten everybody else that we think was the problem. Victoria, Alonzo, Perlmutter, whatever. They've I would gotten have said, them I would all have said gone, Alonzo. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if they're all gone, then the only people who could be continuing this type of content in the way that it's being delivered is either A, Bob Iger, or Kevin Feige. One of them said this. Well, they did also say Star Wars. They to defend their viewpoint. They did also say Star Wars, so could it have yeah, been well, Kathleen Kennedy? Who had a Star Wars? Who had a Star Wars uh, project that was canceled? Remember yeah. Kevin Feige Star I Wars? Forgot about got that. Canceled? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. But it could be Kathleen Kennedy. It absolutely could. Actually, you know what? Throw her name in the hat because I could absolutely see her saying this word for word. Only because it says the Marvels or Star Wars, and that just yeah. kind of that kind of stuck out to me. 
if I had to put some money on it, it's Kevin. Okay. I think the the writing's kind of already on the wall with uh with Kathleen Kennedy. Like if something happens with this Ray movie where it doesn't actually make it to the screens, I mean, you, you talk about solidifying your 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 reputation in the industry as as a flopper like that. I mean, how how many projects can you take from one studio? Would she make an anonymous quote like this? It certainly fits the way that she she is making content for sure. Ahsoka wasn't so bad. Ahsoka wasn't exactly in line with what was the rest was going on in in Lucasfilm. I feel like, but that was also I think the first project that Dave Filoni was heading by itself. So as the creative director or whatever. So I don't know. I, I'd say Kevin or maybe Kathleen Kennedy. I'll, I'll maybe leave Bob Iger out of this because Bob Iger. Uh, he'll just come out and say it behind his own name. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, heard him say similar stuff just like this. Yeah. This one is a shocker. Gladiator 2, the movie coming out, I believe this, is it this summer? Um, uh, uh, it doesn't have a date on it. Anyway, Gladiator 2 supposedly has a budget of three hundred and ten million dollars. This isn't even the story. Where's the story? It shot up. It went up from one sixty five to three hundred and ten. What scene did oh, they add to this movie to make it go up to a three hundred and ten million dollar budget? For comparison purposes, for those who may not know, in game three fifty to four hundred. Same thing for the new Avatar movie. Yeah, three ten is insane. For a movie that was largely done through practical shooting in the first film. So I'm, I'm really struggling beyond maybe renting some time in the actual Coliseum or some, some more historical lands that they may not need to shoot on. Mm-hmm. But I, I just, for the life of me, can't understand what is making this movie. Gladiator? Wait, what is making this movie so expensive? Unexpected production woes and costly delays. That's all they have on here. So... I don't, okay. I don't think it would balloon it that much, but that's, you know. I mean, that, that, that feels they're like there's some fiscal, some fiscal irresponsibility in oh, there for as sure. well. For sure. Like, I, I don't, if we realize that, like, all right, we're, we're delaying, maybe some changes need to be made so we can save some money at that point. It seems like somebody was asleep at the wheel to make the, the, the budget essentially double. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Y'all going to have to pull in a billy almost to, to make it back, so. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're going to have to make a smooth billion to start turning a profit. Silk Spider Society, according to this, to this article specifically, uh, reportedly scraps the writer's room, but you said there was an article that said it's been canceled, correct? So what I had been hearing, they were talking about being more male-focused, Okay. and that may be where the, the Nicolas Cage uh, Spider-Man noir thing is coming in. Could be. Um, look, Sony, maybe you should have left the soap spider society and and canceled madam web maybe that would have been the better canceling like it, it just feels like they're chasing their tail yeah you have the biggest comic book bomb this year even bigger than the flash like come on man i thought they were going to have more time at the bottom like <laughs> didn't think that they would be knocked out that quickly but clearly madam web said hold my beer <laughs> so like you canceled the wrong thing, I guess. Like, I haven't even seen anything on Silk Spider, so I have no clue whether or not it was good or not. Yeah. But it just feels like you made the wrong decision because the one that you let come out stunk. Well, that obviously leads us to Nicolas Cage is reportedly in talks for live-action Spider-Man Noir show. Now, Nicolas Cage did play Spider-Man Noir in Into the Spider-Verse, so it'd be a natural thing for him to reprise that role, I guess, in the live action version interesting to say the least yeah um i don't i don't know whose idea this was but i'll give you a dollar if it sees the sees the tv screen sure sure nick nick K- okay so nick cage as spider-man in an alternate universe that's black and white where he's a detective and then what what streaming service because sony doesn't have their own streaming service who's buying this you watching Nick Cage be Spider Man on Netflix? No. Are no. you watching Nick Cage be Spider Man on Paramount, Peacock, Amazon, <laughs> Disney Plus? Maybe. Where are you watching Nick Cage 
Okay, here's a better question. It'd be Disney Nick Plus, Cage, wouldn't it? As, as Spider Man, well, no, this is a Sony thing, right? But I'm isn't assuming. all the Spider Man movies isn't that still on Disney Plus now? I don't know if they have an exclusive deal with them. I don't know if sure. all of their content. Yeah, it's not exclusive, there. but I thought at least for the most part, the Spider Man movies were. Well, going... And it took it a minute too. Like they weren't on there. Well, you know what? This for is a, a while. Series. All the Spider Man movies weren't on there all the time. Yeah, and this, and this is, is a series. series, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess they got leverage to move it around if they want to. What? What streaming service could convince you to get a subscription to watch? Nicolas Cage as Detective Spider-Man or Spider-Man. Considering I have a subscription to everything but no, okay, Disney obviously pretend that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch it on Amazon, I would watch it on Apple TV and maybe Paramount. Yeah, Amazon still has stuff to prove for me. Do they after the boys in in Apple, Invincible? Apple. Apple TV is criminally underrated right now. Sure. 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 Um, But what does Amazon have to prove to you, at least in this genre specifically, that the boys in Invincible hasn't done well, already? What they've done with their characters has been, or excuse mm -hmm. me, the characters that they've had so far, the Kripke characters, mm -hmm. has been very successful. What can they do with mainstream comic book characters where the restrictions are a little bit higher, where they sure. can't have their main character tearing off a human's head? Yeah. You know, they can kind of push the limits with the boys. They can't do that in the Marvel verse. That's fair. So with the limitations, are you still able to make a good show? Let's see. Yeah. Like, yeah I, I got faith in Apple TV. I, I would pick up an Apple TV subscription for that. And I got, I, I mean, I don't think Nicolas Cage would be that bad as Spider Man Noir. It's just I think who's so. making who's making the series would be kind of crazy. I just don't need this show. I don't need it either, but I'd watch it if it. And became, they're going to spend a bunch of money on Nicolas Cage. Oh yeah, they're going to spend a lot of money on it. But <laughs> I'd at least watch it because it's either going to be a train wreck or it's going to be actually okay. A train wreck would be where my money is, but. Then hey. if it's a train wreck, it's kind of you know, I kind of want to see it. My question is, why are we still adding more projects that aren't live action Miles Morales? Uh, you got me on that one. Why are we still making more products that have nothing to do with Tom Holland Spider? -Man? Like, if I was Tom Holland, I don't. If the reports of him signing a new deal with with Marvel and Sony are real, I I for the life of me don't understand why he would resign it. Why? Why you get to make one to two? Marvel MCU movies a decade and then you're shelved by by Sony. Why would I do that? Why I'm these are my most valuable years. Like, get me out there as Spider Man. I would want to be on Spider Man on every property they got. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not solidify yourself as the as the 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 quintessential Spider Man, the yeah. Spider Man. He's shown up on film and television as Spider Man. I don't know why people are so afraid to to cross that barrier. I feel like it would immortalize you as the character if you were to ever do it. I agree. I agree. All right, we got one last story that kind of ties a few of the stories that we've been talking about in the past weeks together. Uh, which also I didn't we, we didn't mention this in the little pre pre stream meeting. Uh, but did you hear the latest rumor about the uh, about the Michael B. Jordan Ryan Coogler? Oh boy. Nope. Okay. Well, it came from um, Fandom Wire. Fandom Wire. Before we get into the actual story that I was talking about, uh, this is the rumor is that it could become controversial for Warner's Brothers uh, due to its rumor plot. Let's just get down to the nitty. There was this rumor just recently that Ryan Coogler, Michael B. Jordan, and Warner Brothers joined hands for another possibility of a vampire movie. But then, as always, it will not be a regular vampire movie. As for this project, the vampires will fight against the KKK or the other way around with the KKK as the vampires hunting colored people. Yeah. What did we say? What did I say last time we talked about this? <laughs> that that if the fucking vampires was fighting for civil rights, I was gonna walk out the theater, right? Yep. You did say that. Ryan, it's 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 twenty twenty four, brother. It's twenty twenty four. As much as everybody would love to see you and Michael well, 
a lot of people who are not me, but would love to see you and Michael B. Jordan reunite forces in, in, in the way of, uh, of the vampire. I do not think that they anticipated it going through another quintessential American black movie dealing with slavery in some way, sort or, or shape or form, dealing with racism. Like, you mean to tell me even in the supernatural world we can't escape racism? We still got to still gotta be squarely in the middle of racism. Even as all powerful beings who live forever, racism still affects us. Damn, it's something else being black, boy. I tell you what. Yeah, I no longer want to see this movie. Oh, so you did want to see the movie at one point? I was going to see it for sure. Okay. If it has anything to do with racism, racist slavery... Why the fuck would I want? Why do I want to see a racist vampire movie? You I don't, don't want to see, see... kill racist vampires because then that means that you're going to at some point have to have those racist vampires doing violence against black people in the movie, and that's not something I want to fucking see. Sure. Honestly, it's something that I'm quite sick of seeing in your movies altogether. Yeah. It's just repetitive violence against black people all the way up through your films. I'm I'm just kind of over it. And then if you are the vampire being hunted by the KKK, who exactly should I root for in that situation? <laughs> like like the humans of which I am or or the vampires. Who the fuck am I supposed to root for? At, at that point now you are you are validating racist white propaganda. See, they are monsters. We do got to get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. And like I said before, the more and more I hear about this movie, the wackier the whole thing just kind of gets. Okay. But then again, this is fandom wire, so let's you know take right. it with the requisite grain of salt. Sh- sure. Uh, but twin Michael B. Jordans. Twin Michael B. Jordan vampires set in the 1930s in the Jim Crow era uh, going against the KKK is insane. Hey, but now let's let's talk about the article, though. OK, why? Why? Why would that? I mean, I guess I, I, I definitely understand why it would be unpopular. But but what is controversial for Warner Brothers in that? Like what would put Warner Brothers in, in a spot of controversy around that? To show black people fighting the KKK. What, what exactly is the point of controversy? I think they try to answer that. Oh, the subjects could be racism, violence, oppression, and resistance. But all this would be in a horror setup. Being in the early stage, blah, blah, blah. The consequences of the studio might face bashing from the audience and critics. Coming out as disrespectful, crude, or exploitative. As the plot, source material, and adaptations are making fun of movements for social justice. Well, that's Ryan's idea. <laughs> 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 I would I would do exactly what Kevin Feige and 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 them did and Nate Moore did with his ass when he came to them with that huh go talk to him you know hey this was really Ryan's decision we didn't think about it a whole lot Ryan told me what he wanted and we just did it you know Ryan was very passionate about what he wanted to do with this movie he had a great idea you know Ryan really wrote everything you know Ryan really had a lot of great ideas you know Ryan 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 I'd say his name as many times as I could. So when this movie come out, y'all know exactly you know who blame. made it. Yeah. Y'all know exactly who made it. No, for sure. For sure. That's insane. Okay. So, like I said, the story that we're about to talk about encompasses that in one way. It encompasses the Paramount Plus um, discussion that we had, I think, a week or two ago. Uh, and basically, that WB and Discovery are now in talks, or will be in talks in April uh, to merge with somebody now they've already done some sort of merger which made them wb discovery uh but they're potentially going to be in talks in april uh, about merging again and we already said that paramount plus uh was looking for some potential suitors to merge with uh but that's also apparently why they are scooping up and buying so many different uh pieces of content including the michael b jordan and ryan coogler film uh, so very interesting to say the least that they're yeah, looking to merge again. I think again. their plan is is just to get as big as possible. They can't dominate the market with quality, so they're going to dominate it with just buying everything. Sure. They are doing what Disney did in the nineties. What mm-hmm. Dis- what Disney start doing in the late nineties is what Warner Brothers is attempting to do now. Now is this to make themselves attractive to be bought at some point by a tech giant? That could be anybody's game. But 
I something feels like it's not necessarily to dominate the market because they aren't necessarily they're not. Well, maybe that was the point with with the whole Ryan Coogler thing is to start start taking some of the the industry's best talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. And locking them down. Maybe that was the idea with this whole Ryan Coogler thing. That could be it. If they're trying to be the new the new biggest game in town, it's not like they haven't been at one point in, in film history in the United States. Sure. They're trying to regain that market share over from Disney and they're kinda near waning moments, then that I mean they're going about it the only way that they possibly can. Because once again, making blockbusters is not necessarily in the Warner Brothers tank these days. No, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think when we talked about the Paramount Plus thing, we kind of broke down that uh, I think in terms of market share, obviously, I think Amazon has the highest considering the fact that it's Amazon Prime, but then you get video with it. Uh, in and terms of streaming services, yeah. Or, or Netflix, maybe? Well, Netflix, Netflix is like probably a little right bit higher. there. Netflix is like right there, whether they're a little bit higher or a little bit lower. They're like neck and neck almost. Uh, and then after and that, they've that, been it's around longer. Yeah. They've been around longer. And so then after that, it's a free-for-all for the most part. And nobody really has a good foot on it, but whoever wins out of them will be probably that third. And then, you know, after a while, we're going to stop supporting any other streaming service. I, I think ultimately, you're right, we will end up with only maybe like three or four major streaming services. And then you'll have, you know, your Plutos, your Tubis, your, your the smaller stuff, yeah. the Fubo, that kind of supplement it like a secondary market. Mm -hmm. But in terms of getting first line grade A content, is it's going to be only two or three, maybe four providers when it's all said and done. Because it, it, they're just, it, first of all, I don't think there's enough customers for them all to share. Oh, for sure. I don't think there's enough customers for them all to share that people who watch TV exclusively online, regardless of what people keep telling you about the dying cable industry, there are still millions of people in each one of these markets that are still buying cable. Mm -hmm. So they keep trying to convince you that that cable cord cutting shit is going to tank the industry and it hasn't died yet. In fact, they're going through meaning streaming is going through a harder time than cable ever went through. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I do ultimately think that they'll eat each other and then the strongest will be what's left over. It's eat or get eaten for sure, mm -hmm. um, which we'll see how that plays out. That's why Disney obviously merged with Hulu and that's why. WB is looking to make moves. That's why Paramount Plus is looking to make moves. They want to be on top as opposed to be getting eaten. So we'll see who ends up on top for that.